Yes, sir. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that was so good. Holy smokes. Oh. The gua sha wasn't very intense, but his elbow sure is. <laughs> There it is. Oh, hello. Who put that there? Go ahead and tilt left for me. There we go. Oh, that was so good. <laughs>
there are you know one idea is if it slides forward you can put the general here you know to push these guys forward to try to reline it back up i you know would want to see some flexion extensions to see how much movement is actually capable on it if it's solidified or not or yes we can line it up i think it just kind of picks at a wound <laughs> you know i think of it like a wound down there that pars injury and i believe a better long-term care for that is going to be to transfer as much burden off that area to your middle back and i'm really curious to see how willing this area is to work my viewpoint might change in the future i'm not solidified where i am i believe right now i, I believe the best treatment is i'm really going to transfer and see what that does um tell me about anything else going on here yeah so, so, little, <laughs> well, so one other thing that kind of pertains to kind of the lower body is uh, probably five years ago I was um, playing indoor soccer with the kids and I went to plant with my left and kick with the right. And at that point, I could hardly walk out of the gym. Something happened and that has been kind of part of the whole cascade of things too in my pelvis. And that was after, that would have been after the accident. I was pretty stable. I mean, there, I, in general, I feel like everything is stable. I tolerate adjusting pretty well. Mm -hmm. I don't really have any flare ups or I have it in the past. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The question I pose to all yeah. chiropractors and doctors is, is, is the question of, you know, essentially why do we almost see 99% of PARS defects at the last two vertebrae, right? Why do we, I've never seen a PARS defect at L1 or L2, you know, why are we always cracking the PARS at L4 and L5? And why are the 99% of disc surgeries happening here mm -hmm. when there's hardly one of a million surgeries at T, T8 and T10? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, yeah, right. so it's not age, because they're all the same age it's where we're bending. So when you were planting your foot and kicking, most likely most of the mechanical stress was happening here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what needs to be reduced as much as possible. Sure. Um, and mechanically transferring here, we'll put in, you know, try to see what the general does up here, how the knees bent. You know, usually if the knees are bent, that will bring that back up in alignment, but we'll test that out. But I would, I'm gonna work on your middle back, restore some function up here. Uh, the right forearm is just something more recent where I uh, I think it's just a repetitive overuse thing and it's not horrible, but it's there. Mostly just kind of the, the extensors in the forearm. You think the attachment here? Think yeah. Like epicondylitis? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Probably that and just too much phone use. Okay. Too. Tell me about the tingling. Uh, in the shoulder. shoulder. So this hasn't really been an issue. Um, for a while, but I do know kind of back when I was involved in that accident, and I didn't actually have a ton of neck pain during that time, but the MRI did reveal that I had a little compromise in the disc. Okay. I, th I believe at uh, C5, 6, 6, oh, 7. Gotcha. And um, so every once in a while, certain positions will trigger that. It hasn't been an issue for a while. Again, I, I treat preventatively, you know, we want to move as much stress, C5, 6 being the number one operating on disc. Mm -hmm. The reason why that's overworking is because the atlas is underworking, curvature, all the things. You're essentially in, you're pinching the right because you're in left avoidance. So part of why your right shoulder's tingling is because, you know, it's, it's essentially it's a right head tilt that you then drop your left shoulder. And so we're wearing, this is going to be, so I'm going to, I, I suspect I'm going to find something over here that made your head go away from it, maybe a whiplash, you know, something gets jammed over here, mm -hmm. and then that throws the work to the right, and now we're pinching the frame and on the right lower. That's exactly right. When, when that um, kind of paresthesia or tingling was an issue, I mean, I could make it happen just by bringing right. my head back like that. Right. And I could, like, if I go and just stay in this position for a while, it'll, uh -huh. it'll eventually, and then I move, move away and it's fine. Yeah, I got you, okay. Is there hope? There's always hope. Oh. Um, <laughs> Sorry. See, I, I, I he go beats back, himself up because he's a chiropractor. So. I go back to the MRI reports that we always read, right? I had a report the other day, you know, C2 just had one word on it, unremarkable, right? C3, unremarkable. C4, unremarkable. And then in terms of C5, 6, and 7, this radiologist wrote a giant paragraph, right? Bilateral foraminal hyperostosis, disc degenerative disease, right? All, all these huge words in Latin to make everybody freak out and have the patient all scared, describing the horribleness in C5, 6, and 7. And I go, this patient's 70 years old and his upper neck looks the same as it did when he was 18. There was, there's no change in the appearance of his C2 vertebrae and the C3 vertebrae 
well, I mean, I don't, we don't, but I mean, if I have an MRI of him at 18, it probably, probably could be overlaid and look exactly the same, right? Nothing's happened up there. Is that unremarkable that something didn't age? It isn't unremarkable, it's super remarkable. If your skin looked the same, if you're any part of your body resembled 18 year old you, you wouldn't say unremarkable, right? Right. Why am I the crazy one here? Why am I the one going, the guys, that's actually extremely remarkable. It's amazing that that hasn't aged. And that's just overaged. The lower neck has just compensated and, and done all the work. And everybody wants to inject it with something. <laughs> Cortisone shots, we want to manipulate it, we want to inject it because that's where the disease is. And I go, I, I don't, good luck, I say. <laughs> how, about, how about it? I, I, don't, I, I haven't seen success in my 17 years doing it. My dad's 40 years doing it. I focus on all the unremarkables. You understand? Mm -hmm. Everybody else focuses on your the disc injuries and the pars and all that stuff. I go, well, look at his L1. It's not injured at all. There's no pars defect up there. Why is that? Why is, it look, why, is it, why is it not aging? And if we can understand that, we can start to understand why the area that's injured is injured. And if we can transfer the work and understand that it's remained unremarkable because it doesn't function. That's what I'm really curious to see in a second. I wanna see how much your L1, your T10, how much those guys actually bend. Take one deep breath in, we'll sit up, sit up and then let your head back, relax your chest. Exhale, exhale. Oh. Deep breath in, I got you. Relax your chest. Relax, I got you. Oh, oh. Right, deep breath in, I got you. One more. I got you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Why'd you squeeze me so hard? Oh, that's so good. You understand? <laughs> I don't want just your middle back working at its normal level. I want it working more than what it's meant to. You understand? I was like, I got the easy ones and then I kept going because I want, I want it to be moving fully. <laughs> I want full mobility. See. <laughs> nice. Suppleness. I want, I want it to feel like Gumby in there because I know if this is Gumby, how can you overstress this if the whole team's working? This must be jammed to allow when you're planting because you're, you're tightening your diaphragm, your lats, your traps, and you're you know, you just get this tightened, and then this move too much. I got you, but leave that lower back alone. I got you. Put the back of your head in that little slit for me. There we go. Breathe. Yeah. Exhale. Twist. Yeah. Way too tight up here. Yeah. There we go. Move a little bit. Uh -huh. All right. Breathe for me. Easy, easy. I got you. I'm gonna fall. I got you. Oh. All right. Good. Let's have fun. Oh my gosh. Let's that was nice. <laughs> easy. <sighs> that back arched. I got you. You're not going to fall, I promise. Uh-huh. I know you can tell your patients. <laughs> Nobody falls. Uh-huh. There you go. Middle back. All right, good. Face up. How that feeling? Okay? Yeah, very good. Very good. My worry with the huge body slammed on those guys is that we benefit the, the vertebrae that are stuck, but maybe at the expense of blowing the heck up out of L5, right? You know, when we, when we go real body slam and, you know, make really cool YouTube videos, you know, it's like, you just blew L5 out. <laughs> you know, maybe that benefited the joints around, but, you know, we're be as careful as possible. So if, especially if we know there's an unstable you know segment in there. Let's not be going crazy on that one. Um, I got you. There we go. I got you. Let me see here. Yeah, it's a left. You're my bro. Usually, most of my patients are righties. You're a lefty. You're, you're injury right here on the left, right there. This is all sunken in. This problem's over here on the left. So because of this, this is what's causing the right paresthesias. This knot right here has to be cleared. Essentially, your head won't tilt left as effortlessly as it will tilt to the right, and so that drift, the car is um, gliding to the right hand side and so you're going to wear out the cartilage and the joints and the hole gets a little smaller but it's because your head doesn't want to, the atlas on the left is stuck here but i want to see how how willing this guy is to work right here a little bit you could do that all day oh we'll get it yeah we'll get it i got you real gentle just trying to move this top guy a little bit uh-huh relax uh-huh a little deeper let's go a little deeper let it go chin up uh -huh. yes sir all right. All right. nice Oh, that was so good. Mm -hmm. oh, I got you. Relax here. Uh -huh. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. I really think of it as I, cheat, I treat posture. I don't really treat symptoms. Um, I believe that the posture is what creates the symptoms. And so sometimes somebody might say, well, your treatment looks similar. Well, right. First of all, it's usually the same usual suspects that are injured in the first place, C5, 6, and 7, and L4, and L5. So we, um, we're all sitting from a young age till 20 in school. <laughs> we're all on devices looking down predominantly. Yeah. And so, yes, we all have similar wear patterns. And the, um, the restoration of the curves that we lose is, is paramount, the lumbar lordosis. I believe there was, if we had more lumbar curve when, we were, when you were a teenager, you know, be less likely to break up ours, you know. Now, mm -hmm. so the alignment that you were in as a teenager was what? 8, 10, 15 hours of sitting a day, right? And then you have a fall, which not only you're falling, your knees are you're, you're flexed, so your lumbar curve is already straightened when we fall on our butt to begin with. Yeah. Um, Completely just landed squarely on my area. Right, so all the, all the force got transferred to L5 because of the ladder effect, essentially, the, you know, so... Your neck treatment to me today would be look like, Ed, I feel like you rub the left side of my neck a lot longer than the right side. And the answer is correct. Because <laughs> yeah. I need to get the weight off that right side. And like that. That's the way we Feels do. amazing. Yeah. You know, I get the, and I would actually stretch you so that the cervical denaral, the feet piece of foam that looks like my hand and emulates my thumb, mm -hmm. I'd have you on it back to the left. Like this, like that. For about a month, we would hold it. The lower neck, when the curve's in your neck, the vertebrae in lock, so they actually can't rotate when the cervical curve is in your neck. So the more curve you put in there, the less, um, you know, the less movement lo the lower neck will be under. Additionally, uh, Dean Harrison showed that when, through research, they took in cadavers, right? They put the curves in the, in the neck and they took a curve out of the neck. The actual cord, the cord and the nerve roots are tethered when there's no curve. So the cable doesn't have any laxity, right? It doesn't have any ability to move away from the nerve roots, from, from, the, from the disc injury or bone spurs, or it's, it's tethered, right? So it, anything that comes close to it, it's gonna hit it. It doesn't have any like cooked spaghetti noodle ability to rope-a-dope or move away from. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately the cliff notes is it doesn't even matter if you have disc injury. The point is it doesn't even matter if you have disc injury if there's a curve in your neck because the nerve has flexibility. And so it's still all about curve. <laughs> It locks down the lower neck, it gives the nerves flexibility, um, and it keeps your atlas in the game. And to me, it's all, it's, it's sure I could put up my sign up front, McLaughlin Chiropractic, Cervical Lumbar Lordosis Rehabilitation. You know, that's what we do. We got, you got to have those lordosis. Most elevated section, very obvious, right here. Here to here is about a quarter inch higher than your left. So um, this is what's, usually this would cause, but you're saying it's the right leg. So... Left hip. Uh-huh. Left hip. Okay. But right. Kind of right SI joint. Okay. SI joint, ilium. Yeah, because you're leaning away from this. You're essentially in right avoidance. This would be left of use. And you can see the bulk. You know, the amount of bulk that you have over here is significantly higher. This is low here. And then you got mossy mosses over here. <laughs> Way, way too much overdevelopment right here, right there. Oh man! Now this is this is there's just nothing over here, relatively. Right there, feel these knots up here. Holy oh, smokes! Oh. All that hurts so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh jeez. Shot wasn't very intense, but his elbow sure is. <laughs> it doesn't look that intense, but oh. <sighs> There's gotta be some marks in here. The lower back, just the compensation. This was jammed up probably before you even fell as a teenager. This was tight, and that allowed. Hypermobility. It's actually the same injury as my dad had, actually. You saw me, when you described that, it was actually very similar to my father. He got thrown from a steer at about 12, 
landed on his butt, and he he has a tropism down there. Everything's rotated. Like one of his L5 facets is coronal, one sagittal, because of the twisting when it was soft, and the uh, hypermobility of that area allowed him to by 25 have herniated discs all. His lower back was destroyed by mid 20s, and. Um, so as a, as a teenager myself, I would work on my dad for hours up here, moving stress off his lower back and, you know. Oh man, I need to teach my kids how to do this. <laughs> I was 13, yeah, get in here, Ed. We watched Star Trek and Twilight Zone and just, I would just pull, I put an elbow right there. Now we can emulate this to some degree with a piece of foam. I'll show you in a minute. We're gonna use a piece of foam to, to, to make a new fold, to make a new bend up here and stop it from bending so much at L5. And it's definitely gotten easier with each, each of your reps here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I mean, you don't have me in a sweater today, babe, so this is nice, I'm in my... <laughs> she puts me in, like, something last week I was like in a long sleeve sweater with a shirt underneath. I was like, <sighs> I'm sweating here, babe. <laughs> so you have two siblings? I have two siblings, yep. Yeah. My brother Max, who's nine years younger. My sister is 16 months older. And uh, we're all three chiropractors, yeah. It's good times when we get together. That is a chiropractic family. <laughs> There's a lot of adjustments going on. You put four of us in a room. Yeah, some rib injuries over here a little bit. These ribs have been jammed. Oh, man. And then thoracic outlet essentially is pushing oh, this rib this down. Out up there. This rib's got to come. Oh, man. Holy bucket. Oh. You gotta clean this channel here. This channel where the brachial plexus is traveling through is pinched by that. Oh. Yep. Oh man, I didn't even know that. It was so intense. Mm -hmm. I was yep. really bound up up there. Yeah, you gotta hold. This is again another you're, you're teenagers. Put an elbow right there and push that. <laughs> Yes. There's a little one over here. There's a little guy. There's a little, little yeah, knot right here. You don't want to leave him out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget about him. <laughs> now skid it. Now scat. <laughs> yeah. I told you earlier, I'm a very greedy chiropractor. I want it all. That's right. I want every That's ounce it. of movement that I can restore. <sighs> To all your unremarkables. Yeah. Well, right. <laughs> to all your vertebrae nobody else is talking about. And believe it or not, chiropractors have bad ergonomics That's as well. That's right, man. That was part of my dad's training was that, that you gotta learn how to do it and be able to do it forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't learn how to do it. So sometimes what I do is for my sake, not so much for the pain. <laughs> I, I have to do it so I can keep doing it for years. My back will survive. Yeah. There shouldn't be any any of that. There's no speed bumps. No speed bumps allowed. No ripples. <laughs> no ripples. I would say the left side is a fraction of what the right side. Was. I understand. Yeah. The, the subluxation on your right is much larger. It just. I'd want to level the drawer, then we take the drawer and level. But the right needs more care. 
to get it to level with the left. But there is this guy here needs to be. There is an injury right there. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see how. Come on. Let's see if you let me. I like Mike Tyson, the one quote, he goes, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> right? It's like, everything's fine and dandy until you get Ed's elbow again. <laughs> until Ed shows up. Until Ed shows up. <laughs> I thought my spine was doing just fine until I got an elbow in my back. Then I realized, oh, there's something wrong in there. Yeah, a little crunch there. Put that there. <laughs> Someone put a goodie box. <laughs> That's a nice one. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is just a mess right there. Total difference from left to right here. Technique <laughs> Where's the location of the rebel base? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, here it is. Wow, there it is. All right, so when your kids are watching, this is where I want you to beat up on dad, right here. Oh, that's right. This is where he needs it. Gotta... Have some fun with this tool. Yeah, we'll see where it's coming out there. I'll tell my wife I have to take uh, regular trips to Siesta Key now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I always joke that my dad read the book of how to make your own chiropractor. First, you gotta breed them, and you gotta feed them. <laughs> <laughs> and when they're like 13 years old, you can start teaching them. <laughs> the first person I worked on was my mom, right? So my, my mom would lay down, or my sister would lay down, and my dad would put my hands on the neck, and then he'd put his hands over top, right? That's the first way I learned how to adjust the neck was dad adjusting through my hands, right? And then you do that for like three months <laughs> to get the feel of it, yep. right? And then then you keep working on it. And then maybe you, about, I don't know, about six months or a year, I finally got some of my mom's or my sister's bones moving. And then it took me like another year or two to get my dad's bones. <laughs> you were probably amazing by the time you got to Carol school. <laughs> well, I was trying to help my classmates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put down the neck. You're not even holding it right. That's right. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, back to this side, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all my goodies in here. I left, got them all, the front of got them all buried underneath there. <laughs> <laughs> he thought I wouldn't find it if he put a rug over top of it. Uh -huh, I found it. He put, he hid them underneath there. It's like the golden egg on Easter, you know. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. What's cool is the, as we care for the patient through this type of work is that eventually by visit, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, I can't even make a mark on you even if I wanted to, that the tissue becomes so clean and then the tenderness level that you feel while I'm working on you is almost a third, a quarter of what it used to be. You understand? To the point where a patient will look at me and go, are you even pushing with the same pressure you used to? You know, yeah, because right. the tenderness is gone. And at that point, you're literally just having a good day Tell me about your day, and I'm sweating back here, pushing as hard as I can, mm -hmm. and you're no longer or even, you know. It's definitely gotten easier since yeah. you started. It'll just become, it all becomes effortless. If, if the vertebrae do what I ask them to do, there is no difficulty. If they, there's only, it's only when there's a battle between what I'm asking it to do and what it is used to doing, and, you know, that bone's been injured, Ed, and it, it froze up, and now it doesn't want to work, and, yeah, this, this is the channel here, it's got to be. Put it up here a little bit. Right there. Like, what is your, um, like, your best, uh, most basic, like, lifestyle recommendation for most people? Don't tuck your chin to your chest. <laughs> Reduce that as much as possible. Yeah. Every time your chin tucks to your chest, you're going to upset this whole area. This, the, the roots elevate. So you, when your chin tucks, these root, the, the, the attachments here then elongate and pull. And tucking of the chin to me puts the most, that, that's the first piece. Loss of cervical lordos lordosis is the first domino that then creates plantar fasciitis and drop metatarsals and mm -hmm. heel spurs. <laughs> That those are ultimately just long domino chain effects of you know the chin being tucked i mean you go to the mall and everybody at the apple store has got their chin on their chest hanging it as far it's on the bump stop it's as far forward as it can go and yeah. they're just hanging out there for an hour for sure <laughs> they have it reversed they don't just have just they don't have just an ortho neck they have a, a kyphotic neck mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they're hanging out there for who knows how many hours and nobody's saying anything. <laughs> nobody's, nobody's blowing a whistle. Nobody's saying, hey, guys, the interdiscal pressure that you're putting those discs through is going to make them last 25% as long as they're supposed to make it. Well, that's a major societal right. Right. issue. Right, right. And so, again, I go back to what I said earlier. I, I don't treat symptoms. <laughs> treat posture. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't separate the two. I, and then... Your spinal health is your health. It's not a aspect of your health or a percentage of your health or a part of your health. It is. It's the whole. That's everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if your spine's healthy, you're healthy. If your spine's not healthy, you're not healthy. And all your organs, your pancreas, your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, your gallbladder, all, all that's under the function of your spinal column. You already, I'm teaching my. This is for people listening. I know you already know this. Oh, I love it. <laughs> but yeah, this, I love it. I mean, my love handles down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I got attachments here that are inflamed. Thanks. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> yeah, right there. Oh. Yeah, right there. It really is amazing. I just say, I feel like this is super thorough. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, come on. Uh, mm hmm.
Yeah, watch your, yeah, there we go. Keep that forehead to forearm contact. Okay, one second. <laughs> okay, buddy. There we go. Yep, I got you, bud. Breathe. Breathe. I got you, bud. Breathe. I got you. Relax your chest. Relax. Relax your chest. Okay. All right. Oh. Arms down. Arms down. Holy buckets. Yeah. Wowzers. You know, all that. This is all just inflammation, yeah. areas that are clogged, frozen. Got to get that moving properly. Yeah, wow. Would that be later? Yeah, I felt all of that. <laughs> Left for me. Tilt left. There we go. Good. Oh, nice. Go ahead and tilt left for me. There we go. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Right, go ahead and tilt right for me. Uh huh. And then tilt to the right for me. Tilt right. Oh, dude, that was really good. <laughs> there you go. Kind of middle upper neck was where I would be with it. And then, like I said earlier, a little bit of left rotation mm -hmm. to get a little more pressure on that left C2, C1, C2, as much as we can on the left side, try to open up that right channel. Mm -hmm. I would do like a one month kind of trial. And as that knot on this left side goes down, then I would just go straight. Mm -hmm. But I think it helps. The guys that make this don't recommend this. I just find it to be beneficial. So mm -hmm. easy. Let's see here. Play back, I got you, bud. I got you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep the knees bent. Bent? Keep keep bent. Yeah, you're good. Yep. Let's go. Take that off. Let's see. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Head back. Yep. Head back. Head back. Yeah. A little deeper. There we go. Oh man, that feels good. You know, there's one more book. You understand? <laughs> the idea would be to have nothing behind your head. You know, and we just put your arms relax. There you go. Relax. There you go. And this is your end of the day where we stretch the middle back looser so that every visit, when we adjust your middle back, we get more and more suppleness out of it. And, you know, like I said, making a new fold, taking, taking the stress away from L5. I value my lordosis too much. Why? We, that's everything. It's got all the best curves. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you lucky? If practice is in uh, the Southwest Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Awesome. Uh, you can find us at PrairieLakeSpine.com or RingdingerMN.com. Cool. So it's been an awesome experience here. Awesome. Super, super thorough. If you're in Sarasota or otherwise, you got to come and find Dr. Ed. Yeah. Cool. And he has a channel. We'll link it. So okay. well, go cool. check out his channel too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you can find us at, at 10,000 Cracks. Yeah. All awesome. right. Thanks, <laughs> right, Thanks, bud. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks. <laughs>